Stocks. Mass Financial, pardon me, has made an impressive debut on the Lal Street. It's listed at a price of almost 630 rupees. Remember, the issue price for this was 459, so a hefty premium of almost 37 to 40 percent, which one is seeing on this. The subscriptions were also good for this issue. The total subscription which it received was almost 128.4 times. We'll be getting Shraddha on this, but uh, if I ever go by the data, the price where it has listed the price to book is almost at about a nine times. Let me bring in Shraddha into this conversation. Shraddha, what do you think? The listing has been way above. I don't know what the street was estimating, but definitely the subscriptions were good. And uh, the AUM for this NBFC is pretty small, 3,000 to 3,500. Do you think the valuations are too stretched now? <laughs> uh, we will ask that to the uh, analyst which comes in. But yes, at uh, you know, at the price of 660, the price to book value for this one works out to close to 10 times. Uh, so that's actually surpassing even uh, what uh, AU Small Finance Bank had actually seen in the early days of its uh, listing. So one of the most expensive financial services stocks. Uh, just a quick recap about what this company is. It's a Gujarat headquartered NBFC. As many as, um, uh, you know, as much as 58% uh, of its uh, AUM comes from micro enterprise loans. Another 24% comes from uh, the SME loans. So total 80% coming in from those two sectors uh, uh, only. Even if you look at the uh, quick um, recap of the financial uh, picture, net interest income, net profit and AUM growth have uh, been stellar. Return ratio is also very strong and hence all brokerages had given a buy on this one. And like you spoke, uh, it was not surprising uh, that we had seen an overwhelming response to the IPO. Uh, and uh, yeah, like we were talking about the valuations at about 650, 660, that comes to about uh, 10 times. And uh, I think we should, uh, we can talk to the analyst. Uh, uh, I think we'll, well. we'll be getting the analyst in a while. But the asset quality for this one, if I compare it to the peers, Radha, it definitely looks good. GNP is only about 1.1%. But uh, uh, let's just uh, go across uh, to uh, the management and find out what their key takeaways or what their plans are uh, in the coming quarters. We firmly believe that concentration of risk is far less a risk than spreading it too thin. So if you say 85% of our business comes from Gujarat and Maharashtra, and we have kept the powder dry for our future growth in terms of our expansion in other four states, that is uh, Rajasthan, MP in the west, and Tamil Nadu and Karnataka in the south. Also, uh, Mr. Gandhi, could you explain us why the share of two-wheeler loans has fallen dramatically since uh, fiscal year 2013? See, that is the advantage of being a multi-product company, that you can allocate your uh, capital and financial allocation in the way which stands the litmus taste of balance. If you say that we have always believed in striking the balance between the growth, profitability and the ROEs we generate for our shareholders. So as far as SME and MEL is, is concerned, we find more opportunity in allocating our financial assets there, financial allocation there as compared to two-wheelers and commercial vehicle. Having said that, with our geographical expansion, that uh, assets will also start growing. Growing. Also, uh, how do you see your AUM mix then changing uh, in the coming years? Because most of the loans are concentrated or are micro enterprise loans in small and medium for small and medium sectors. If I tell you that uh, MEL and SME is our specialty and uh, that's a huge market but I must share with you as a practitioner that they're very high entry barriers. So MEL and SME will grow above average whereas two-wheeler commercial vehicle and we have recently started used cars also will grow below average if we are talking about a growth of anywhere between 25 to 35 percent. Mm. Also, with the goods and services tax and with demonetization, uh, the unorganized sector and the SME sector was the one that was really the worst affected. So how did that impact your asset quality and how do you see uh, the gross NPA moving in that case? See, our June numbers are already published and they are uh, on our website. And if you see the quality of the portfolio, what we have maintained despite of all these things. And pre-IP also shared with number of investors and uh, number of channels that the stress is the time of the fundamental of the credit assessment you do. And I'm very, I take pride in telling you that we work with wonderful set of entrepreneurs that despite of all the problems, they are in a position to manage their finances in such a manner that they don't default. And uh, as far as their mass is concerned, and we have been in a position to maintain our loss given default within the uh, uh, permissible limits. Um, also, since the net interest margins have also been on a falling trajectory going forward, what will be your outlook for assets under management and on the margins? 
see the right way of looking at it is when we decide any product the right way of putting it is that what will be the ROS that will be generating because net interest margin after net interest margin there will be operational cost and then you will be left with NPMs and then the ROS so if you if you say that over the years we have tried to be more and more competitive reduce the cost of borrowings for our clients reduce the operational cost maintain the credit cost maintain reasonable names and maintain constant ROS so going forward it will ever be it will be our endeavors to maintain ROS, reduce our borrowing cost and hence pass on that benefit to the borrowers, reduce our operational cost, maintain our credit cost and at the end of the day maintain our ROS despite of being very competitive in the market. So where do you see uh, your margins in AUMs in the next one year or two years, if you have to say? Really? I, I think we will be maintaining, maintaining our ROS in terms of balance sheet anywhere between 3.25 to 3.5%. All right, we also have uh, uh, um, Digand Harya from Antique Broking who's joining us. Uh, thank you uh, for being here, uh, uh, Digant. Uh, at the listing price of 660 and a valuation of about 10 times the FI17 price to book value, just how rational or irrational this valuation is and is the street really ignoring all the associated risks? What's your call on the stock at this level? Uh, firstly, uh, see for financial, it may not be prudent to look at uh, trailing book, especially when there has been a capital raise. So, Mars has had a very successful capital raise. So, let's just look at the numbers after this capital raise, successful capital raise has been completed. So, our calculation is that the book value is will be close to 130 bucks for FY18 and around 150 bucks for FY19. So on these numbers, the stock trades at uh, close to 4.1, 4.2 times on FY19. Uh, so, well, this is at a little bit of premium compared to uh, other companies in similar space like Sri Ram City Union or Capital First. I think this premium is right now largely due to the fact that Mass Financial has a smaller book size and can probably grow at a much faster rate than what a Sri Ram or a Capital First could. But yeah, having said that, I think uh, uh, I think at, at four times, uh, at four four point two times, uh, obviously you know building in upside currently is uh, definitely out of question, and and I think uh, investor years year will have to wait for uh, you know few quarters or maybe even years to get meaningful upside because uh, obviously Mars has done very well till now, but you know to scale up from a loan book of. 3,000 crores to say five, six, seven thousand crores will be a slightly different ball game. It will involve doing a lot more of retail lending rather than the institutional lending which Mars has always done. So I think yes, there are challenges at this price. If an investor has to get in, he has to be very, very careful uh, in evaluating these risks. That you know, when you enter new geographies, new products, when you go directly retail, uh, it may not be very, very easy because you also have competition coming in from. A lot of these small banks, you know, which were erstwhile microfinance companies, they are trying to scale up and they are trying to enter the MSME two-wheeler and these spaces. So it's obviously an interesting space, but there are there definitely are risks at the valuation. Uh, Dikant, all right. Uh, so uh, at these levels, isn't uh, uh, say a Bajaj Finance, for example, which is um, uh, similarly placed in terms of uh, the growth profile and return ratio profile, uh, slightly probably expensive on the valuation bid, but given this larger size, uh, aren't investors better placed to be invested in a Bajaj Finance right now versus a mass financial? Right. So see, an investor has to take its own call. See, Bajaj Finance will be trading at close to six times on FY19. Mass is trading at four times. So valuation wise. Obviously, Bajaj Finance is far more expensive, but yeah, it is it is uh, 20 times the size of Mass Financial, and and it has and it has proved uh, and it has proved uh, uh, continuous execution over last five years. So I think uh, you know everything in this space is expensive because market is pricing in growth, uh, and and growth is scarce elsewhere. So these NBFCs are the space where there is a lot of growth. So, so I think investors can choose and pick whatever they're comfortable with. So I think we particularly have a hold rating on Bajaj Finance also because we think that stock is also priced to perfection and uh, and same with Mass Financial. But I think uh, you know with, with years to come as they execute, there will still be some returns which will be made. All right. Thank you so much for joining us with your uh, thoughts, Degant. Broadly, uh, expensive valuations, yes, but probably the street is pricing in uh, the growth potential. Uh, back to you guys. All right, Shraddha, thanks a lot for uh, joining us. It's been a successful listing, so to say, for Mass Financial.